7%. The content is 7% of the total communication. 55% is body language. My facial expressions, the way I move my hands, the way I look at you, the way I nod, the way I breathe, that's 55%. And 38% is my voice and intonation in my voice. The volume, the pace, the pitch, the tone. So just imagine, you are working on this 7% all your life. <coughs> all the life. Have you seen some of these speech of the politicians? No matter what they are saying, most of the time, you know that they are lying. Why? Because the body language is not conducive, it's not aligned, it is not in power with what they are saying. Did anybody hear uh, or listen to Obama's uh, uh, speech after, the first speech that he came, uh, gave after becoming the president? Yes. Did you notice he never had a piece of paper in front of him? It was all explained. And the words that he was using, by the way, there's a report on the internet that Obama throughout his presidential campaign used NLP and hypnosis in his speech. He was using NLP. The great American president whose name will always be written in history because of a very famous case. Who was the president? Bill Clinton. The famous case he had to ask. Bill Clinton, when he became the president, his advisors told him that he has to learn NLP to be an effective. Bill Clinton went through NLP training to be a good president and he was a great, great manipulator in terms of communication. He was great. Okay. So, let's, from today, understand the importance of our posture, facial expression, eye contact, voice, volume, tempo, pitch, speed, tonality. All this comprises of 93% of the communication. So let's focus on the content, but the way you present that content, the way it is passed on to the participant, makes all the difference. Now this is how communication takes place. A person who is in a forest, to him, because there's a tree he thinks is in a forest, although this is not a forest, there is a tree there, but the person who sees the tree thinks it's a forest. The person who sees a house thinks he's in a town. Now both of them are in the same place, except they are two different locations. And because of what they see, their thought becomes the same. They see a house, they say I'm in a town. They see a tree, they say I'm in a jungle. So what you see basically becomes your reality. This person could not transcend this and think that he may be somewhere else where there are a lot of trees. And this person could think that there is a place where there are a lot of houses. It may not necessarily be a town. There could be a forest around the town also. People can't see that. They can't think that. What they see, they label it as a reality. To them, that becomes a reality. Next. Now, this is very interesting. This is what happens to us. My God. At the door of perception, there are three gatekeepers. Anything you hear, anything you see, anything you taste, anything you touch, anything you feel, any information that comes from the external world through your five senses <coughs> is checked by these three gatekeepers. We have a guy downstairs, right? He gave me this card. So similarly, there are three, three gatekeepers. One is called delete, one is called distort, and one is called generalize. How they work? Amazing. Any information that is not required by you or against your belief system, you instantly delete it. Instantly delete it. So it doesn't get into your brain. It gets into your brain, but it is not recorded as something uh, that you would need to use. So it's in the junk folder. Second, any information that you receive from the external world which you cannot understand, but you need to know. Like today, I am telling you a lot of things. Most of it you will not be able to understand, but you know it is useful. So what you do is, you will generalize it, make it less complicated. Which means what I am saying is not what you have understood. You understood what you want to understand or what you can understand. Are you with me? Okay, let's, let's take it this way. 
whenever we learn something, there are four levels we cross. The first is called unconscious incompetence. The second is conscious incompetence. The third is conscious competence. The fourth is unconscious competence. What it means? The first, conscious incompetence means you don't know what you don't know. The second, conscious incompetence. You know what you don't know. The third, conscious incompetence. You know what you know and you do it what you know. The fourth, conscious, unconscious competence means you do it without knowing that you're doing it. This is how we learn. Like for example, as a child, I did not know that the aircraft does not have an engine as a car does, which moves the wheels. So I was at the first level, unconscious incompetence, where I did not know what I did not know. And then I learned a lot about aircraft because I love aircrafts. And then I realized that, oh my God, the engine is different. It does not move the meal. It creates a thirst. And because of the thirst, the plane goes forward. And the wheels move automatically because of the movement. So I was at the level where I knew what I did not know. Okay. Then I started traveling a lot. And I started studying aircraft. And of course I'm not, I don't fly an aircraft, but I do drive a car. So same example goes for a car. So when I started driving a car, I learned how to drive a car. So I was at the third stage, unconscious uh, competence. And I said to myself, great, I can drive a car. And then after a couple of years when I was good enough, I could drive a car, I could listen to a music, I could talk on the phone, which I should not do or talk to a friend sitting next to me on the, on the passenger seat. So I was at the level of unconscious confidence where I am driving, yet I don't know whether I am driving or not driving. I am doing it automatically. Okay. The same thing happens here. When there is something that is difficult for to understand, why? Because we do not have the right kind of information base. We do not have the experience about this. The first thing I asked when I started this, this presentation was, how many of you do NLP? No NLP. You said no. Most of you don't know about NLP, right? But yet you are here to understand what NLP is all about. Why? It may be beneficial for you in your personal life, in your professional life. So what you are going to be doing and you are doing right now is you are making things less complicated for yourself to understand. So every one of us will understand whatever I am telling you slightly differently. Yet everybody will understand. So when things are very complicated for us to understand, we do a generalization. We generalize it with things that we can understand. Connect it with things we can understand. And then it becomes very easy. Okay. Uh, just wanted to understand the difference between uh, distort and generalize. If you want to make something acceptable, and again, if you want to make it less complicated, do you think that they like kind of overlap? I have not talked about distortion right now, but I will explain to you what distortion is about. Generalization is when you connect it